I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks, and today we're making bacon jam. Chef Frank, what is bacon jam? Bacon jam is a condiment, like ketchup, like relish, like mustard, uh, but it's just a little bit more beautiful than that. Look at it. Uh, it's spreadable, it's sweet, sour, and smoky. And today, I'm gonna show you mine. This is what you're gonna need for my bacon jam. Bacon, light brown sugar, garlic, shallots, cider vinegar, bay leaf, uh, thyme. This was fresh, but I dried it myself. Chipotle in adobo and some stout, stout beer. Let's cut our aromatics. I have some shallots here. Um, and when I originally started with this recipe, I used to grind up the garlic and the shallots, but I find that it, it gets a weird flavor at the end, so I decided I want to slice it. Gives a little more texture. Um, I'm slicing them very thin because I want them to melt a little, but grinding just didn't work. It was a little, it was a little too pungent, uh, but I am using four shallots. Good. Okay, let's put these into my bowl. If you don't have shallots, you can easily use red onions. You can use uh, regular white onions. I just like shallots a little more. They're a little, uh, a little more, a little stronger. Get a little more flavor than uh, onions. Okay, chop my garlic. Ooh, those are strong. I can feel. <laughs> Ooh, those are super strong. Woo! They're making me cry. Gonna go fairly fine with my garlic. Now normally I don't chop my garlic all that fine, but I'm just gonna, I want it to kind of melt into this. or not to be big chunks of garlic when we have our finished jam. And then our chipotles. Now I get chipotles in adobo, which means they're in a sauce. I use this one cutting board. You can see the back is stained, but I use one cutting board for this because it stains everything. And one chipotle, about one and a half chipotles is really good with the sauce. And uh, you wanna just chop this fairly fine. I like for my jam to have a little bit of heat to it. You can always add more, you can add some cayenne if you want, but for the most part, I just want to uh, get that nice kind of smoky heat. A lot of times when you see bacon jam, uh, the bacon's chopped into small pieces. And I like to grind mine, right? So that the finished product has kind of a smoother consistency. It's easily spreadable. We'll have a little bit of texture with the garlic and the shallots, but I choose to grind. I wanna get a little bacon in every bite. Let's grind. Just a quick note on this, I don't cut this. If I drop this into my grinder, the grinder will pull it through, no need to cut. All right, everything's ground up. Time to cook, and I'm gonna start off with the bacon. Um, my bacon's ground up. I always have a little bacon fat in house, uh, and I know bacon has a lot of fat in it, but I always like to put a little liquid fat in my pan to start. Just, not a lot, just a little. This is gonna get mostly drained out. If you don't have bacon fat, you can easily just use some um, vegetable oil, okay? So let's just get that melted, right? And then we could take our bacon and throw it in there. And we're gonna render this out, kind of over high heat. And I just wanna get most of the fat out. And I don't want the bacon to be brown and crispy. I want it to be light brown and still have a little chew to it. So we're gonna let that go. While the bacon's cooking, we need to make sure that we have everything else because basically once you get the bacon cooked, this goes fairly quick. It takes a little while to kind of cook out the, the beer and the sugar, but it's all just kind of dumped in one pot. I have a strainer with a bowl to collect the excess bacon fat. Um, I have everything else close by. I have salt and pepper. Our bacon is done, and you can see it's it's not super brown. It still has uh, a little softness to it. I'm gonna strain this out. Because I don't wanna use all this fat. I wanna use some of it. And I got all these nice little brown bits in the bottom of the pot. All those brown bits are good, right? So I'm gonna put that on, back on the fire. I'm gonna take some of the bacon fat and put it back in my pot. 
Because at the end of the day, I don't want this to have a lot of fat on it, okay? I'm gonna take my shallots, and my shallots go in. I'm gonna take my thyme and my bay leaf and put it in with the shallots. Put the thyme in there with the stems on it. Uh, they're easy to pick out, the leaves will fall off, but I just basically, I can't stand sitting there and picking thyme. It's always been uh, a pet peeve of mine. So we're gonna let these cook down a little in that bacon fat, break them up a little. And I'm gonna let these cook until they start to brown. And once they start to brown, we'll add the garlic and the rest of the ingredients. If the bottom of your pan starts to get too dark, just lower your heat a little. Those shallots are really nice and fragrant. The thyme and the bay leaf in there make it, mm, mm. Okay, I think I can add my garlic. All the garlic goes in. I basically just want enough fat in here to start like, you know, getting some color on the, on the uh, aromatics. I don't necessarily need a lot of fat because at the end, like I said, I don't want this to be greasy on top. I want it to have a nice jam-like consistency. My shallots are lightly browned. My garlic is getting toasty, right? And now I can add, right, the stout goes in. That's gonna get all those nice brown bits off the bottom, right? And I need my apple cider vinegar. My vinegar goes in, and now you can pretty much put everything in, everything into the pool. My brown sugar, my chipotles go in. All right, I'm gonna let this come to a simmer, and then I'm gonna add my bacon. Scrape the sides down really good. Okay, so let's take a chance right now to season lots of black pepper. I like lots of black pepper in this. And you're gonna need to hit it with some salt. Uh, and now that it's come to a simmer, let's add our bacon back in. Right, and the thing we need to do now is just let it cook down. We need to let it cook down until the liquid gets syrupy around the bacon. And this will probably take about 20 minutes. You wanna make sure you get in there and stir once in a while so things don't stick to the sides and it doesn't uh, burn on the bottom. Okay, so it's at a nice hard boil now. Now we can lower it. And I'm gonna lower it down so it just simmers away lightly, okay? So it's bubbling away happily. It's still a little liquidy. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take out my bay leaf. I'm gonna take out my thyme sprigs. It's hiding, hiding on me. They've given up their flavor. And now I'm just gonna let this cook down until it gets almost syrupy. So when I first put the liquid in, the bubbles are really small and they break really quickly. But as this gets thicker, you see my bubbles are getting bigger and they're kind of like, uh, like tar, like they just go bloop, bloop, and they just break a lot slower. And that's what I'm looking for. Uh, I think that we're good here. The liquid is, is syrupy enough. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and put it into a container. And I'm gonna let it chill until it's nice and cold. And it should be ready. All right, I'm gonna do a quick taste. You can see that it's kind of thick and sticking to the spoon. Mm. Oh yeah, really good. You can make sure you use your Star Wars tasting spoon. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put this in the fridge until it's totally chilled, and then we'll plate it up. All right, it's cool. So what I'm gonna do now is just stir it up. If there's any like loose fat in there, I like to mix it in. And then I like to store it in these little jars, right? Uh, at this point, it'll sit in your fridge for like a week or two. You can give it as a gift. Um, it doesn't usually last that long, so you can give it as a gift. But I'm just gonna pack it into this jar. Uh, maybe that's too much. Seal it up, put it in the fridge. The bacon jam is done. I wanna talk about a couple of things I like to use it on. Uh, I like to put it on turkey sandwiches. Right, put a nice big helping on my turkey sandwich instead of like mayonnaise. Right, right on top there. Give it a little cut. Really good on turkey sandwiches. I like to put it on my grilling cheese. I got the nice bonfire grilling cheese. Gonna put some on there. And then you can just take little pieces of the cheese and the bacon and put it on toast. Or you can just take it and put it on toast by itself. 
This works really well on eggs, on cheeseburgers, hamburgers. You can even warm it up with just a little bit of warm water and some oil and use it as a warm vinaigrette. Any way you choose to use it, I'm sure you're gonna be happy with it. So let's give it a taste. I'm gonna give it a taste on this crustini with a little bit of my cheese. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, I'm getting everywhere. <laughs> what I love about it, it's got so many things going on for it. It's sweet, it's sour, it's meaty and smoky. You gotta try this. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. We have merch down below. We have an address down below in the description. I wanna thank my Patreon patrons for supporting us. We appreciate it so much. And that's it, that's my bacon jam. Look at that. You can't go wrong with it, guys, make it. I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks. Have a good one.